Get away, Jordan. I want you to get away. Get back, Jordan. I want to cross over to see my Lord. It is Sunday. Guess where I'm going? Can you imagine? I'm actually short of time, so gotta go. I want to cross over to see my lord. I don't know about this, man. Sit up on your feet, turn around, shake somebody's hand, give them a compliment, tell them things you need to know about me, if you know nothing else, is that uh, I'm the father of three children, uh, all of which are three and under, okay, so my life is a bit crazy right now, uh, these are these are them right here, the children, uh, Tegan is my oldest daughter, and uh, she's the one who looks very mischievous there, and she's plotting something, because she generally is, um, Cohen is, uh, is our middle son, he's about a year and a half old, and uh, he is shirtless in the middle of the day. Um, it's, just, it's just kind of how we do it around our house. And uh, the little one uh, there, he is, that's his secret. Um, we love him to death, and uh, it looks like his brother's trying to choke him to death. And that's uh, it's just love right there um, from the kids. Uh, last night, it was funny, like after the service, somebody asked me, like, Adam, how come you talk about your kids so much? And just to be honest with you guys, um, that's really the expanse of my social circle at this point in my lifetime. Like, I just, all I do is hang out with children and, uh, and teach you. That's like basically all I have time for at this time. I have no idea what is actually happening in the world. Uh, I know what happened on Thomas the Train yesterday, if anybody's interested. That's basically what my life looks like. That is a creepy little kid show. I don't know if you've ever seen that. That's a messed up show. What is happening right now at this moment? Right now, like, like this is not how I want to see myself. This is not how I want you to see me. I'm not myself right now. And we feel the need to say things like that because we know people are always watching. We know they're always observing us, making little decisions about us. And we don't want someone to make a judgment about who we are based on one little thing we once did in a shameful moment. Because labels don't come off all that easy. Long after everybody else had forgotten that we put a label on somebody, they remembered that it used to be there. And this is kind of how labels work. They, they go on so easily. They're thrown out so quickly and casually, but they come off slowly and stubbornly. They have a way of seeping through our skin and imprinting themselves on our soul. I don't think this morning we have to go very far for some of you to trudge up some painful memories of when somebody labeled you in a moment of weakness or darkness in your life and how that label stuck with you, how you tried to peel it off, but how the residue is still there. And it affects the way that you live, the way that you think. Labels have this way of making us feel self-conscious and insecure. We always feel like we have to do something to prove that that's not us, that we're not that person. But that label doesn't accurately <coughs> describe us. I just want us to look at a story uh, in the Bible about Jesus and a group of religious people and a girl who lived life underneath the label, so much so to where the Bible doesn't even really give us her name, just the label that she, she went by. Hey guys, it's Steve and Phyllis stopping by doing our adultery checks. <laughs> I wanted to say, hey, what's happening here? You guys, whoa, you're coming to the temple with us. <laughs> but these people.
people would have had to have known that this was like a struggle for this woman. Waiting for her to do something stupid or sinful so that they could point a finger. Not because they were lovingly concerned with her and wanted to restore her or wanted to rescue her from something, but because they wanted to see somebody get in trouble. Have you ever known anybody like that? Please don't point at somebody. That was actually really good. I enjoyed that. I get really claustrophobic when I'm just by myself and I'm a visitor. I get really claustrophobic. So I sit in the back and I sit it's like on the back wall. And uh, if there's any, like the slightest bit of putting me on the spot that anybody does, I run. I just literally, I'm out, I haul out of there. But no, that was a really, 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 really good, good service today. I really enjoyed that. And uh, my battery ran out, so I had to, I had to stop recording. I, I, otherwise, it would have captured a lot more. But I love the music. That was, the music was awesome. And uh, the message, what he was getting at that I had to cut it off was, you know, just that religion looks at your past actions where, whereas, you know, Jesus has already dealt with all of that and he's just looking at your heart and the point of it all is just live, live your life. Don't let, you know, the labels that you've acquired just pull you down. Anybody can use that. Anybody can get good from that, but I particularly need that. They've got singles groups over there, 30s and 40s age range. I'm probably going to try to get involved with that. They also have other ministries. Um, man, I think today I'm going to do pizza. Yeah. Um, I tried to frequent that church before, and the problem I had there was, like, I went like three or four times in a row, and like two of the three times that went in a row, they tried to hyper-spiritualize the importance of giving to the church, which I'm, I'm just very sensitive about that because there's so much, there's just so much to glean from the Bible besides the spiritual aspects of giving to your church. And so that just really came across to me as the commercialization of, of the service. I just don't, I hate that. I really hate that. I have no problem with it on occasion, right? Like if it's every three months or so, they have a sermon on, you know, that you should give. But if it's, you know, I went, I gave it three, not one shot, not two shots, but three shots. And at that point, 66% of the time, they were talking about money. Give it, give it, give us your money. But this one today, that was really good. I, I really got, I got good out of that. So I think I'm going to, make that my home church and keep frequenting it beyond Sunday. Very good. Very good. Very, very good. Very good. Very, very good. <laughs> I'm almost out. I am totally, let me pause this, I'm watching somebody's vlog here. Um, I am stoked because about 15 minutes ago maybe, they just, after I put in my request last night, they just up upgraded my cable modem from Deluxe or whatever to Premiere or whatever it's called. So now I have, check this out. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> my upload problems are going to go away because I had just kicked off an upload. It was said it was going to take 57 minutes or whatever. Now it's saying 18 minutes. Beautiful. That's so beautiful. I'm going to cry. <laughs> no, I'm not. Well, I had not played the Portal 2 co-op mode. Um, and I tried to kick it off like just to see if I could maybe find a random internet player. I had to abort. It's not it's not fun when you've never played co-op mode before and people that jump in have played through it already. It's not fun. That's really not fun. I really need to find a friend 
somebody who hasn't played co-op mode before. And the whole thing about Portal itself is when you, when you do a puzzle, you are le trying to figure out the puzzle, right? If you already know how to do the puzzle, then it's just a matter of speed. And that's no fun. Not, not as fun, I should say. And I guess it gives you points if you do more of the work. I, or something, because it kept giving my the, this random guy that I joined up with all the points, but he knew what to do, so I'm like, this, is, this isn't fair. He's getting all these points. He knows what to do. He's And I'm just sort of doing what he's telling me to do. Not fun. So I won't be able to play Portal 2 co-op mode, and I'm really bummed about that. I am so glad you're no longer in heat. You need to go away, though. You've got cat hair, and you shed all over me. Well, because this is Sunday, and Sunday is a free day, <clears throat> and there's much I could do today, including, you know, lots of vlogging I could do today. I'd have a lot of fun. I think I need to probably cut this short, only because I don't want to make this vlog too long, and I want to include some of that church stuff for myself. I know that you guys are probably going to be, like, bored from that, but I'm not. <laughs> so, good vlog today, I guess, and then we'll resume tomorrow or something. That's a great picture for um, msnbc.com. Just dawned on me that you're not you're not really a musician unless you're wearing a hat and a hoodie. This is this is totally meaningless. I've got complete down here and cubase, but you know, I never use them and I realize what I'm missing is I'm missing a hat and a hoodie. Let me see. I think I have a hoodie back here. I need to look like them. Totally. <laughs>